Heidi ho Arkansas Pilgrim here again, back in the kitchen. But this time it's not for cooking anything, it's for a pseudo redneck repair. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. We're out in the shop. Maybe we'll go back into the kitchen. But we'll see. To explain what I meant by pseudo redneck repair, the oven door handle broke on one of our ovens. We have two ovens. We have a convection oven and a regular oven. Something I did when we built our house to make the kitchen very versatile and well, I just did it uh, also for, well, Mrs. Arkansas Pilgrim. Well, she liked the replacement handle I made for this broken one. I'm not sure I mentioned that, but I have already re made a replacement for this. But she liked that other one so much, she said, hey, why don't you go ahead and replace the other one that isn't broken, which is actually this one. I've already taken it off. So they match, you know, because, well, she doesn't want the thing to look redneck, even though I don't mind. A real redneck repair would have been just taking bailing wire and run it through the two different screw holes on either side of the oven door kind of wad the wire up on the end so it wouldn't pull back through and then if you were trying to be fancy put duct tape on the wire in the middle so that when you touch it it wouldn't make your hands dirty and it'd be soft on it but this is a pseudo redneck repair because i'm not buying the new handle i'm making one and the reason I'm not buying a new handle is because, believe it or not, this piece of plastic, by the time you, know, you pay for this, even from a you know aftermarket place, by the time you pay for this handle, tax and shipping, 100 bucks, maybe even more. So it's like, no, I am not going to do that. Now, if you're a person that actually doesn't have a lot of tools, maybe this is the time to start because you can go to Harbor Freight, and I know I make fun of Harbor Freight, but I also buy stuff from there. But if you're a weekend warrior, as they say, you know, you're not making your living with these tools, you can buy a bench top drill press. I'm gonna be using a drill press, but you can buy a bench top drill press a cheapy hole saw set, which will be good for wood, and the dowel that you're going to be using to replace the handle with, and the screws, because you need about three inch long screws to between going through the, the, the oven door and the dowel, and actually a little offset so you actually have a space to put your hand. For $100, the same price you would pay to replace it, you can actually end up with not only a handle, but also some tools that maybe you can you know do some stuff with. So I would encourage that. And I'll put links in the description, even though I'm not getting you know kickbacks or anything from Harbor Freight. Let's go ahead and get started. Take your broken handle and the piece that broke off, and actually just to make it simpler on myself. I'm just going to take this new handle. They're both the same length. But take the broken handle and the piece, put them together. You know, didn't, you know don't, don't use measuring tapes if you don't have to, because I don't know, sometimes even though I measure, I end up screwing up. Take the actual piece, go ahead and mark the length. Okay, there you go. You mark the length off of it. Now let's go, cut. well, I'm going to do a handsaw thing here. Okay, I actually have a little Japanese pull saw. We're gonna go ahead and take and cut it to length. Now we find the distance to the ends to from the, for the screws. And uh, I, I do recommend getting, and you can get these at Harbor Freight too, and they're not bad, especially since, I mean, you're not making a piano or, you know, rocket engines or anything so these you know these rulers are fine a nice little steel rule like this nice six inch ruler a lot easier to deal with than a tape measure on small distances 
small measurements. So we've got in the end inch and a quarter. Okay, inch and a quarter from the end. And we'll mark that on one end. So, oops, here we go. And go ahead and just make a mark one and a quarter right there. These screws, uh, you need to drill a pilot hole um, before you screw it because you don't want to, you're going to be screwing into something near the end and you don't want it to split. And it's always, it, it's always, a good, almost always a good idea to drill a pilot hole. Um, but, you know, you need to get the right size hole also. And what I do, uh, you can look it up online, and, but I have to admit, I've looked it up online before and found numbers that I didn't think were correct. So the, you can always check yourself by just grabbing one of your drill bits and you take a look at it. You stick the drill bit in front and then make sure that there are threads sticking out on either side of the drill bit when you're looking at it. But it's you're also not it's so small that you're looking and you're also seeing you know the part here below the threads that are still solid. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use a one eighth, and we're going to go ahead and do it over in the drill press. Press. So let's go over there now. Okay, we're over here at the drill press. Now, he, now this is called a drill press vise. It's something that you can put pieces in to help hold it solid. These slots over here are for like bolting it down, I guess, if you really need it to be solid. And uh, but you can also like clamp it in with, you know, with with other clamps to put it in spot. Uh, that's not that important right now. But uh, if you get one of these, th this will run it over the hundred dollars. This is probably another 20 bucks from from Harbor Freight and they're not a precision thing. So you can get them from Harbor Freight and not worry about it. Uh, you can probably hold this by hand on your bench top drill press. You can end up just holding the piece in place by hand and doing it. Cause this isn't, like I said, this isn't making, you know, you know, nuclear reactor parts or, you know, high tech, aircraft fighter aircraft parts this is i mean you're drilling a hole in a piece of wood but i do like to have the drill press vise because it holds it nice and solid and you can adjust stuff and keep it in the, in, in the right place now i'm also putting a piece of wood below so that it doesn't splinter when it comes out the back So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just pop this in here, tighten this down a little. Now I, I, you know, I'm going to move it and make sure that it's, you know, eyeball up at top, cranking that in there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead, drill a nice pilot hole. Oh, even then it went off to the side. Um, that... That's one of these things. Well, since this is the first hole, it doesn't matter. It's the second hole that's the problem because you need to have both holes lined up. I'm going to go ahead and twist this a little bit. You know, green in the wood and stuff will make, especially small diameter drill bits, it'll make them deflect and then they drill funky holes. And it's just part of the thing you got to deal with when you're doing stuff yourself. So, anyway, but you. Uh, I don't know if you were able to see that, but it actually, as soon as I started drilling, you could actually see the drill bit drift off to one side. So let's see what happens now. There we go. That's going straight vertical. And yeah. I did that twice because I actually wasn't, since I'm, you know, paying attention to videoing, I wasn't careful enough that I uh, didn't line up. If you'll see, I didn't align, you'll see the hole and then the gap in the metal here. You don't want to run the drill bit into, especially if you have cheaper trooper drill bits, you don't want to run it into the metal of this. 
because that's also why I have the wood piece below it. But, you know, if you're not paying attention, you can just run it through. Um, so I went through the second time, and there's actually like a scale here on the side where you can see, you know, how far you've drilled through. So that, that's what I was doing the second side. Anyway, um, generally it's good to put it where it goes right through, and you don't have to worry about messing up your drill bit. Anyway, there we go. We got a nice through hole. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, we are back in the kitchen. And what I'm doing is I'm marking the spot for the other hole. So here, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and used the original screws to, you know, one of them to screw back, screw into the hole we just drilled, holding the handle in place. I'm gonna put this one through here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just scratch. We go. I'm just going to scratch a line there so we get the hole lined up perfectly. Rather than measuring, I mean, I mean, you know, we already showed that the drill bit might actually deflect. So, hey, you know, you want to have it, the original, you know, the, the original spot, this, the right spot actually be as accurate as possible just in case there's any uh, deflection or whatever for later. Okay, back in the shop. And now here, this is probably, and I'm not going to say probably, this is the trickiest part of the whole thing, even for me. With, and, I, and I have the tools that I've been talking about. The trick is we've got a hole drilled here, and we want to drill the hole over here and make sure that they're actually lined up properly. So that you don't end up with, for, you know, one hole going this way and to exaggerate it, one hole going this way. They need to be right on the top of the cylinder all the way down. And it's, again, it's not super critical, but you just have to set yourself up, make sure you've got that one hole right on the top. And come over here and get yourself close enough to the top. We've got the scratch here, but go ahead and get yourself there. And then, of course, now the issue of having the drill bit deflect once it starts, you know, you need that hole to go there. You can't make a correction like we did before. So, what I do with that is I take. Let's see, here we go over here. Um, here's a nice punch. I take it and, oh, it actually already rolled away. Where'd it go? There it is. I take it and I put, get a nice sharp punch and get yourself, you know, poke the hole in there. Not, not a little tiny hole to mark it. You know, something that that drill bit is going to follow. So, let's go ahead and go to the drill press. I've gone ahead and set it up in the drill press vise, and I've got it what I think is vertical. And I think we're going to be okay, but let's go ahead and do it. I just realized that I did something stupid, but I'm going to leave it and I'll explain it afterwards. Okay. worried about my video and not thinking about what I was doing. It's one of the dangers of videoing stuff for YouTube. You know how I, on the previous one, I drilled through here and I said I got to have a piece of wood to keep from... I'm not supposed to drill all the way through because that's going to be the front and visible. I just need to drill through a pilot hole far enough for the screw to go through and not have to 
you know, drill its own hole. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to start this over on another piece. And the reason is because this is going to end up being spray painted black. And that hole is dark and black. You know, it'll be dark against a black background. And you basically won't be able to see it. I guess, so this is uh, sort of transitioning to more of a redneck repair because I'm going to leave that hole because it doesn't, one thing, it doesn't really matter, but you also will not be able to see it unless you get down on your knees and look at it. Maybe you'll notice it. I'll notice it forever because I'm the one that made it.